Hill Climb Racing is a really addictive game where you control a physics-based car and try to get as far as you can before you run out of fuel. Let's make it in 10 minutes. Set up a new 2D universal render pipeline project. Let's download the sprites. Link is in the description. Here is a list of all the sprites that I used for this project. For the terrain, ground, and surface, be sure to change the mesh type to full rect and the wrap mode to repeat. Otherwise, we're going to have problems with the ground later on. Create a parent object for the vehicle and make the car, driver body, driver head, and two copies of the tires, child objects of the empty vehicle game object. Place the sprites around till you're happy. Change the car's order and layer to four, the driver's body to three, the driver's head to two, and the tires to one. Really quick, let's set up a test ground for the car. We'll replace it soon. Don't forget a box collider 2D. On the car, let's add a polygon collider 2D. This will create a collider that tries to match the shape of the car. It does an okay job, but let's tighten that up a bit. There we go. While we're here, let's create a physics 2D material called no friction and set its friction to zero and place that in the car's polygon collider. This is gonna help the car not stick to the ground once we add hills and bumps to the ground. For each of the tires, add a rigid body 2D and a circle collider 2D. I added a tire friction physics 2D material to the tires with a friction rate of two. And finally, on the parent vehicle object, we wanna add a rigid body 2D. Set interpolate to interpolate and the mass to two. Now our car collides with the ground nicely. Now add two wheel joint 2Ds, one for each tire. On the first one, let's drag in the front tire into the connected rigid body slot and the back tire to the second slot and move the anchor point to the center of each tire. It should snap into place. You're going to want to play with these values, but I like a damping ratio of 0.35 and a frequency of 3. This controls your suspension. A high frequency will keep your suspension tight, and a low frequency obviously doesn't. All right, let's get this car driving. Create a drive car script and attach it to the parent vehicle object. We'll want serialized rigid bodies for each tire and a float for speed, and a private for our move input. Let's grab our input using get axis raw in the update, and in fixed update, we'll add torque in the negative direction of the move input times speed times fixed delta time. Assign the rigid bodies, and now our car can drive. We also wanna be able to rotate the car when it's in the air just a little bit. So let's add in the car's rigid body and a rotation speed variable and add torque to the car in fixed update times our rotation speed times fixed delta time. For the car, we do not want to use negative move input. Assign the new rigid body. Now let's make the driver's head a little bit wobbly. Add a vertical capsule collider 2D to the body and a circle collider 2D for the head and add a hinge joint 2D. This will also add a rigid body. Set the mass to 0.5 and the gravity to negative 0.1. This is gonna ensure that his head tries to keep itself upright. For the hinge joint, add the vehicle as the connected rigid body and set the angle limits to negative 50 and 50 for the range. And move the anchor down to the neck. And now he has a nice wobbly head. Really quick, let's install Cinemachine and create a 2D virtual camera and set the follow to be our vehicle. This is going to ensure that the camera follows the player. Time to handle the ground. And for this, we are going to use Sprite Shape. Create a new Sprite Shape profile by going to Create, 2D, Sprite Shape Profile. Create a range from 68 to negative 68. Use the ground terrain as the fill texture and delete the default sprite down here and add the terrain surface. This is going to ensure that if the slope of our surface is within this distance, grass will be drawn on top. And if not, it's just going to be the ground. Now let's create the base for our ground by going to 2D Objects, Sprite Shape, Closed Shape. Assign the sprite shape profile we just created to the profile slot. And you'll notice that there's no grass on there yet. To get it to show up, we need to edit the spline and make the top left point and the top right point linear. Immediately when you do that, you should see the grass show up at the top. Now we could start adding points and manually create a level ourselves, but that's way too much work. Let's generate one procedurally instead. Create an environment generator script and add the execute in edit mode attribute at the top so that we can see our changes in the scene view without playing the game. We're going to want serialized variables for our sprite shape controller. Don't forget the u2d namespace at the top, as well as an int for our level length and floats for our x multiplier, y multiplier, curve smoothness, noise step, and bottom. And finally create a vector three for the last position. In the onValidate method, which automatically gets called when any value in the inspector is changed, we're first going to clear the spline. Next, let's loop through each of our spline points Points and add some randomness to the top right spline point. We don't want random.range though because we aren't looking for that much randomness. We want to be able to add some randomness, but we want it to be relative to the last spline position that was created so that we don't get crazy jagged spikes. We want smooth hills and curves here. So we'll do that by using Perlin noise. 
Perlin noise works by generating random values at specific points in a grid, and then interpolating between those points to create a smooth, organic pattern. All right, moving on, now that we have the position of the point that we want, let's insert a new point there. And if this point isn't the top left point or the top right point, then we want to set the shape tangent to continuous. Otherwise, we're just gonna get really sharp edges. Let's add more control for the smoothness of the tangents. And finally, let's create the bottom left point and the bottom right point, setting the position of the Y based on our bottom variable so we can directly control the thickness of our level. Don't forget to assign the sprite shape controller. Let's get the player and ground positioned better, and you can go ahead and delete the old test ground. You can create all kinds of levels with these controls. You can see the level length controls the width of the level. The X multiplier just stretches what's already there if you want to flatten it out. You can do the same with the Y multiplier. The curve smoothness does exactly what it sounds like. And cycling through the noise step just lets you constantly generate new randomness. If you just don't like how the level looks, scroll through that a little bit until you find something you like. And the bottom controls, like I said, how thick the ground is. Now we'll want to be able to collide with the ground, so add an Edge Collider 2D. Now at first, this is just going to add a straight line. Untick the Update Collider option and recheck it to allow it to update. And now your Edge Collider should match the ground. But we don't want it to be on top of the grass, so let's adjust the offset till we're happy. Make sure Optimize Collider is on and that your detail is set to high quality to ensure nice, smooth colliders. Now we have a level we can drive on. Awesome. Let's add the fuel next. Create a new canvas and set it to scale with screen size. And let's create two images, one called Fuel Back and one called Fuel Front. I'll make the back a dark gray and the front a bright green. Add a square to the source image, and if you don't see a square appear in your search, tick on this little eye icon and some should show up. Change the image type to filled, change this to horizontal, we want it to fill from the left, and now we can drain our fuel. Create an empty game object called Game Manager and add a script to it called Fuel Controller. Let's make it a singleton. And we'll want a reference to the fuel front image, fuel drain speed, max fuel amount, and a private called current fuel amount. In start, make the current fuel amount equal to the max fuel amount and update our UI. This method will change the fill amount of our fuel meter by dividing the current fuel by the max fuel. Let's drain our fuel every frame and update the UI. Let's assign the fuel image, and now our fuel is draining. Keeping it green the whole time doesn't make a whole lot of sense though, so let's add a gradient to our fuel controller, and we can evaluate what color it should be based on the fill amount. Let's fill out the gradient to a nice green on the right, a yellow in the middle, and a red at the end. Now our meter is changing color while it drains. Awesome. I'd like to be able to end the game when our fuel runs out, so first let's create a game over canvas. Set it to scale with screen size, add an image as a child object of the canvas, and assign our button sprite. Let's scale it up a bit. Next, add a button component and change transition to none. Add an image as a child of the button and assign the restart icon. Let's scale this one down. To set this all up, let's create a game manager script and add it to our game manager game object. Make it a singleton and grab a reference to the game over canvas. When we call game over, we'll turn on the game over canvas and freeze time. Make sure to turn it back on at the start of the game. And to restart the game, add your scene management namespace and reload the current scene. Let's assign the game over canvas. Go back to our button in the game over canvas and assign the game manager to the onclick event and call restart game. Go ahead and deactivate that. To call game over, go back to the fuel controller and call game over when we run out of fuel. Now we can die and we can restart. Of course, we also want the player to die if they hit their head on the terrain. So add the tag ground to our ground object and create a script called driver death from head and attach it to the driver's head. In here, we'll call game over if our driver's head collides with the ground. There we go. Now let's add a fuel canister to our level so we can fill our fuel meter when we drive into the canister. First, let's create a method that will refill our current fuel amount and update the UI in our fuel controller script. Drag in our fuel canister sprite and make it just slightly bigger. Add a trigger box collider TD and make it fit nicely. Now create a collect fuel script and attach it to the fuel object. In there, we'll call our fill fuel method if our player collides with the fuel canister, and then we'll destroy the fuel canister. Since our polygon collider is on our game object, let's add the player tag to that object and make this fuel canister a prefab. Now we can refill our fuel meter. And last, let's show the distance that we've driven. Add a text mesh pro object to our HUD canvas. You'll need to import text mesh pro. Let's place it right below our fuel meter. Let's use the same font that Hill Climb Racing does. And as far as I can tell, that is agency FB. If you have Windows 10 or 11, you should have this by default. You can find your font files in C, Windows, fonts, and drag that font into your project. And in order to create a new font in Unity, let's go to Window, Text Mesh Pro, Font Asset Creator. Drag in the first font file and generate the atlas. 
save your font and drag that font into our font asset slot. Let's also add some outline thickness to the font. And let's make it right aligned and reposition it so that it doesn't move every single time that the number updates. And finally, let's create a display distance text script. Add it to your game manager and get serialized references to our distance text and our player transform, as well as a private start position. Update the start position in start. And let's calculate the distance between the player and their starting position. Zero out the Y and set it to zero if it's negative since we don't want negative numbers showing up. Finally, let's update the text to be the distance. Ensure you type in F0 in quotes for the text format so that no decimals show up. Add an M on the end for meters or a Y if you want to do yards, I guess. Assign your text and player, and there you go. Also, I forgot, let's change the background color on the camera to a nicer light blue. In testing, it looks like my tires might be a little bit high. I changed the damping ratio on the tires to 0.3 and the frequency to 3.5, and I moved the tires down a bit. And if you do reposition the tires, don't forget to reposition the anchor points back to the center of the wheels. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then please throw me a like to help this video get shared with more people. Bye.